vaccine outweigh the risks in the majority of people and it's still vitally important that people come forward for their vaccination and for their second dose when invited to do so. Now I appreciate those numbers, those figures will be absolutely zero consolation to you and to your little boy. Mm -hmm. But you want to speak about what happened to Lisa. Yeah. Those numbers that you talk about there are staggering, incredible. What the vaccine has done is unbelievable. And as I say, Lisa and I both queued up to get our jabs and had no qualms about doing that. And we've, like I say, we're very positive about it. And as I say, the work that these people have done to get the country back on its feet is outstanding. But we need to recognise that there are families who've been affected by by this jab you know i've seen i've seen numbers that have been um taken from the government's own yellow card system you know a reputable doctor has has, has pulled this information out that suggests that the number of fatalities is approaching 1500 people and I appreciate the, the, Gareth, those are not the figures I have, just to say that the in terms of the yellow card reports, that's when people report yep. adverse reactions. There were three hundred and ninety nine cases of blood clots mm -hmm. with low platelet counts like Lisa in the UK following the AstraZeneca jab. The overall case fatality rate was eighteen percent with seventy one deaths. That's out of more than thirty two million doses of the vaccine. As I say, I'm just going by the numbers that I've seen. Um, an independent um, doctor has reviewed the, the yellow card system and has, she, she talked about approaching 1,500 deaths. And that uh, even 1,500 deaths, I'd say, versus the number of people who've been vaccinated is a, it's a drop in the ocean. It's, you know, but it hasn't been a drop in the ocean for our family. It's. It's hit our family, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, sisters-in-law. It's hit us like a like a tidal wave. It, it's we don't we don't even know whether Lisa, as a statistic, features in the yellow card system. Lisa's death certificate is currently an interim death certificate that does state the. The, the AstraZeneca vaccine on it as a, as a cause of death. There's an inquest, um, but I don't know whether Lisa appears as a, as a statistic until that is concluded, I don't know. Um, the coroner has told me and my family that they don't believe that the, the, you know, the, death, the cause of death will change. Is that it's highly unlikely. There's, there's nothing to suggest that it would change. Mm -hmm. um, but as I say, I, I, I think those numbers need to be looked into. I, I, I just feel as if these people need to be talked about. OK. Um, and you have shown me the interim fact of death certificate. Uh, it talks about irreversible brain injury. It talks about hemorrhage and swelling of the brain. And it talks about complication of AstraZeneca COVID-19 virus vaccination. Yeah. I'd like to read a statement from the Department of Health, Gareth, if I may. Um, the government say vaccines are safe and effective. All vaccines being used in the UK have undergone robust clinical trials and have met the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency's strict san standards of safety, effectiveness and quality. I want to ask you finally, Gareth, how would you like Lisa to be remembered? Lisa was always smiling. Lisa was so kind. She was my best friend. She's a fantastic mummy and daughter and sister. And she was an excellent broadcaster. She'd do anything for anybody. And 
she was just doing the right thing. That's all she was doing. And... I just don't want what's happened to her to be brushed under the carpet. If anything can good, good can come of what's happened to Lisa, so this doesn't happen to other people. We sat there in the intensive care unit and we saw what they did to my beautiful wife to try and save her. I don't want that to happen to other people. I don't want anybody else to have to tell their children that their mommy's not coming home. So as I say, if, if, if she can remember, be remembered in that way that, you know, she's done some good, that would be positive. Gareth, I am so, so sorry. Thank you very much for talking to us today. Okay. Thanks. Gareth, Eve, and listening to that is our medical edit editor, Fergus Walsh. Uh, Fergus, tell us more about the condition that we're talking about here. Yeah. It was heartbreaking to, to listen to that. And, and Gareth is absolutely right that there does need to be a focus on um, the side effects and potential risks of vaccines, as well as the benefits. People need to make an informed choice. And let me tell you about this particular condition. Obviously, um, in Lisa's case, we have to wait for the inquest, but the, the coroner's certificate does mention complications of the AstraZeneca vaccine, her, her first dose. And there is um, a, a known side effect, likely side effect, very rare, known as vaccine-induced thrombosis and thrombocytopenia, thrombocytopenia, VITT. Now that's a, a condition where clots form in combination with low platelet levels. And that's something that doesn't happen naturally. And therefore, um, the medical regulator, the MHRA, uh, thinks there's a, a strong likelihood that it is the vaccine causing this. And we've had uh, just under 400 cases of that, most of them after the first dose. Um, uh, and we've had 71 deaths. So it's about one death per 650,000 doses. Now, all medicines, including vaccines, have risks as well as benefits. Um, but you have to obviously set that against, for individuals and for society, um, against the risks that you're trying to um, caution against, mm. prevent, which is COVID. And with COVID, there have been something like 1,900 deaths per million people in the UK. Uh, and of course, COVID itself is known to be a serious cause of clots, something like one in five people who are hospitalised with COVID will end up with clots. When we, I mean, so the figures that you've just given us there and which I, I talked to Gareth about show that this condition is rare. And when we look at vaccines, any vaccine, there is the balance of the risks versus the benefits, aren't there? Isn't there? That's right. And, and with this condition, I mean, it first was identified in March. It didn't um, crop up in the trials, um, uh, the global trials of this vaccine, because it is so rare. Um, but it first uh, started being investigated uh, in around March. And haematologists um, really went on a, a, a real sort of quest to discover what was happening here. And it, and it relates, it's very similar to a condition caused very rarely by a blood thinner called heparin, where um, for some reason the body seems to create antibodies um, against platelets. So we want, we want the immune system to create antibodies against COVID, but in these very rare cases it seems to create antibodies against platelets, they start to clump together, you get low platelet levels as well. And um, the fatality rate initially was much higher, but it's now something like 17%. Um, there is some suggestion that there's a slightly higher risk um, in women than men, but it's not absolutely clear, and slightly higher incidence in younger people. And that is why initially the JCVI, the body that um, recommends which what vaccines go to which age groups mm -hmm. said okay well we're not going to give um